Okay, great morning. It is Sunday, August 18th. For the new subscribers, welcome. For those that have been hanging around, always good to have you here. And so let's uh, take off this morning and see what we have. Um, done have pulled out a few cards today. And so, okay, I'm going to talk about what I've got here. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> for those that don't know me, <clears throat> I've been a guru since 1999 when my journey completed in realization. Uh, for me, it's, uh, I guess you would say, it's claircognizance, uh, just knowing, just knowing. So how does this just knowing come in? Because the ego deconstructs and the mind stills and you're in what's known as Turiyatita, which means there's no mind spin. I don't hear thoughts. Okay. <laughs> that ended in 1999. All of that blows out. Okay, so you become a very clear, uh, you don't have the interference of mind play in emotional attachment and upheaval going on in your life. So you're able to see things uh, very objectively. Okay. Uh, so that's what happens, okay. Um, <clears throat> I have a book out that's called Kundalini from Hell to Heaven. Uh, my journey was through Kundalini. I had a Kundalini awakening at a young age, again, completed in 1999. So I have a book for those that are in the midst of a Kundalini awakening. What are the things that you transition through? Um, so that's out there. So if anybody's going through a Kundalini Awakening, uh, you can get that book on Amazon, Kundalini from Hell to Heaven. You get it there for cheap, okay? <laughs> there, I think there are some used copies running around that are really cheap, okay? And the book is not expensive to begin with. So um, anyway, that's out there. Uh, so a little as to what I've seen going on, and I started talking about this maybe five, six years ago, that the world is now going through a polarization. You know, you have the light, things are getting more light, they're getting more connected, and those that are headed towards shadow, very ego-based, okay, things are ramping up in that area, that division. So we have one set that's going toward community, okay, aiding each other and light, and we have the other set that b is becoming more polarized in the other direction of singular achievement, you know, for me, um, after money, after all of that drama, okay. So we have two sides going. And so all of this stuff is coming up and people are saying there's more more evil, evil in the world and more of this. Well, you know, again, this is coming up so people can see it and we can make changes and we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. <laughs> this too will pass. Just remember, this too will pass. Take a breath. For those that are within the light and everything comes from the light. Nothing was created evil in the beginning, okay? What happens is evil comes to being by misunderstanding a truth and then skewing it and skewing it and skewing it. And this is what's so dangerous about these cults and that type of thing because they get a little bit of truth and people you know, will catch on to that. And they go, well, I know that's true. But then they start spinning it and skewing it until it winds up bearing no resemblance to, to the truth, the kernel of truth that they started with. Okay. And so people get pulled into these things, um, you know, and they don't have the wherewithal to see that they are being skewed. Okay. So... Anyway, this brings us to the reading today. 
for those of you that are watching the channels, not, my, not only my channel, but all the channels of the great readers out there, Taroa Pantis, uh, Lena Rodriguez, Jen Lynn Tarot, um, Linda G, Violetta, um, <laughs> there's another lady that's from Australia. Oh, Revealing Light. I think it's called Revealing Light. Anyway, you'll see that the uh, readings among many of us that are doing this light work, that are called into this light work, will dovetail one into the other. So I am so happy that readers are starting to come together. And you see, you know, I've watched and, and seen how these things really dovetail. They really fit together, okay? Now, whether one has the skill of psychic and you see vision. Oh, another one, Dave. Dave that does, <laughs> channels the man in the moon. <laughs> He's a lot of fun too. Whether you have where you are seeing it or you have clear audio that you're hearing something that you're able to channel the masters or like myself, that's clear cognizance where it's just known. It's just, you know, kind of point blank in your face. You know, and, and this is kind of what gets me because for me, it's so simplistic. It's just seen, it's just known. And I'm going, why are people not getting this? This is like so clear, you know, but I guess when you are in your emotions and in the mind spin, okay, you're, you're so locked into that that you don't have uh, enough being backed off out of it to, to see, um, to be able to see clearly what's what's taking place anyway <laughs> that being said let's get to the the uh, reading of the morning and the reading of the morning is more for those that are wanting to be light workers you're feeling you're being called into that uh, avenue whether it's doing tarot whether it's leading workshops you know, whatever it is that you are wanting to engage in, and all of this is needed. There is a place for all of us within this to continue to give nourishment to those that are faltering, okay, that are, you know, getting pulled into these uh, negative spin things and uh, try to break people free of these uh, conspiracy theories and these dark energies of, uh, you know, uh, clinging that they're getting in and trying to get these personal powers, etc. then they start getting off, you know, on a track that's not so great. So let's see. Here's the, uh, um, the, uh, well, here it is. I'll just give it. First thing you need to do is you need to take some time out for yourself for rest and rejuvenation in quietude. Now, wherever you have the best quietude, it doesn't matter whether it's in your home, whether it's out in nature, find the place that you can rest and get refreshed at where you can quieten your mind, okay, and enter more into that still place so that you can get, whether it's clear audio, whether it's uh, on a, a, a plane of feeling, whether it's visionary, you know, it doesn't matter how you get this information because different people access it in different ways, okay? So get a place where you can rest, rejuvenate, where you can connect Okay, if you are still in the midst and you haven't completed your journey, then call on your runners. Okay, call on the universe. And for some people, you know, Kundalini will awaken. And it's, I say Kundalini is like the roto rooter of consciousness. It brings up all of the sludge and the mud for you to wade through and look at and dispel and confront, okay, along the way. It's a long journey, it's a bit perilous, but in the end, you know, you can complete 
and uh, then you have moksha, liberation, freedom, okay? And you find out the only thing you need to be free from is the mind, okay? Once you're free of the mind, and that that's what keeps you locked in to your bondage, then, you know, you're good with whatever is taking place. You know, you're quite happy on the planet. So if you are a person, <laughs> say, I'd do anything to get out of this existence, and you get to the end of the journey, you find out there's nothing to, you know, no, there's nowhere I need to go. It's quite fine once you get free of the mental spin and the drama. So again, get a place where you can be rested, rejuvenated, refreshed, relax into things, open call on your runners. And if you want God more than you want anything else in the world, you want truth, these things will open up to you. I guarantee it because, you know, God, that energy, that divine is, is so precious and it's out there to continue to give, okay? We have free will. We have free will. We can either turn towards the light or we can deny the light and go towards ego. We are not puppets that are forced to follow the light, even though it is so precious, okay? So again, find a place, rest, rejuvenate, Call on your runners, your guides, masters, angels, you know, those on the other side that are working with you. And there will always be there, those on the other side that are working with you. Uh, every morning when I'm giving this talk, the talks, I will have butterflies that come to my window. <laughs> it's wonderful to see them out there. Every day when I start talking, here come the butterfly, you know. So it's nice to see them out there. Okay, now if you uh, can, and most people that want to be light workers have some sort of a uh, dynamic and a uh, direction they can go. And all of us are needed, everybody is needed. Every light worker, because there are gradients of where people are in their path. So if you have a specialty, something that's pulling, the, that, that you've got a handle on, and you can share it, then take the lead, okay? Be willing to share that with humanity, okay? Step forward, give what you can give, okay? Now, in my own journey, I made that commitment long ago that whatever I got, from spirit, whatever I learned, I would share that. I would give it out. I would, you know, <clears throat> try to repay. You can never repay freedom, liberation. You can never repay that. You can't buy it. You can't go down and buy a course and get liberated. It's a, it's a journey that you have to do, the mystic's journey, the hermit's journey. You have to go through this on your own, okay? It's a... Uh, Again, it's not a group dynamic. Everybody has to make this journey themselves, okay? But again, you know, if there's something you can give back, give back, take the lead, okay? Do that and continue your journey until you can get beyond illusion. And I like that it's got the butterfly because you go, you start out a, as a caterpillar. We all start out as a caterpillar, you know, going along, climbing the tree, eating what we need to eat, getting what we need to get, then we wrap up in our little cocoons, you know, and let all this stuff gel and percolate, and eventually we break out as a butterfly. The transformation takes place, okay? And then again, once you have that transformation, you are always within that rest and rejuvenation, okay? You're no longer, you reach a point where you're no longer, people ask me if I meditate. I, you, you're in meditation all the time because the mind is still, there's no mind, okay? There's no mental jargon 
going on any longer. So it is a continual state of meditating without needing to sit and meditate. Okay. <laughs> It's, it becomes your normal, your normal way of existence. Now, for the first um, <clears throat> year or two, once you enter that state of Turiyatita, where the mind is stilled and quiet, everything is so expanded feeling. It's like you're in bliss all the time. It's just bliss. And your connection with everything, you are one. It's not a connection as much as you are one part and parcel of whatever it is you are seeing, okay? But eventually that goes and it becomes your normal mode of existence, okay? So um, it's no longer big wide-eyed. <laughs> so anyway, that's that journey. Um, but yeah, wherever you're at in your path, just continue forward. You know, we all, especially those that want to be light workers that are setting up for that. If you're going to be a teacher, a light worker, you will go through the dark night of the soul because you can't help somebody else out of it until you know the path through it. Okay. So those that want to be teachers know it is going to be a long, hard road for you to go because in order to aid somebody you have to understand what it is so you will slog through depression and all these other things i mean you know you you'll have all these mystical things happening you'll see auras you'll feel what's going on in somebody else's body you may know their thoughts you may have a moment where you can control like in my journey you could control weather was doing healings. I mean, all this stuff comes up, okay, for you to transition through so you understand the workings of the universe. And that it's not about gaining powers. The biggest power in the end is not having the powers, is letting go of all that stuff and just being in flow and in sync with the universe as it is not needing to master and change this and change that okay to understand that that divine is which is perfection is in the midst of all of creation okay and it will work itself out so <clears throat> You know, that's why you don't get so flustered. Yes, we see these things happening and, you know, it's miserable to watch it, but you understand that everything is eternal in nature. Everything is eternal in nature. And that those who are passed out of form early, they're not dead, okay? <laughs> They're very much alive on the other side. Their consciousness is still going on, you know. It, so this is the grand play of the universe and working this journey out. So those of us that are going towards light are just, you know, ahead of, of the others. Eventually, those that are... <clears throat> in that spin of darkness, either eventually they'll so fall, fall so hard that they want to um, go towards the light, or eventually they will be absorbed, okay? Um, so that's the way that works, okay? <laughs> One or the other, you know, take your choice. Um, so, uh, again, you know, karma is in place, and if you ever experience, and those that have had near-death experiences, they have that awakening of that divine love that's there, that feeling of just, it's so all-encompassing, it absorbs, and people don't want to come back because they feel that divine is. They have a momentary, uh, <clears throat> a momentary feeling of that divine is. And at that point, they're not afraid of death anymore because they know there is no death. It's just you leave this form. Okay, that's all. You leave this form and you continue your journey. So that fear is taken away. <clears throat> 
So the difference between that and realization is that for those who reach realization, those of us that enter that, for us, that's always there. For the near-death experience, they get a brief momentary glimpse of it, okay? <clears throat> but for those that have done the journey, complete the journey, this is always here. This divine is, this presence, you know. Um, and you know God, you know what God is. You know God is not some being sitting up on a throne. You know God is spirit, has no face, okay? It's, it's that pure, pure life force that, that can never be tainted by any of the happenings that are going on in the planetary realm, okay? So anyway, I'm not going to get into all that because you could get very, you know, deep. In it. <laughs> I'm not going to get into all that today. But anyway, the divine is, is within everybody, you can never be separated from God because God is what's giving you life. That is your life. That life force of God is inherent in everyone. That seed of truth is there if you want to access it. That's why they say guru is within. It's not this face. It's that pure truth, that pure light, that pure is. Okay. I have a piece that I wrote a long time ago, and let me see if I can find it. Here's, here's the book, Kundalini from Hell to Heaven. Um, oh, why the Silence and Why Not Mine is a good one. Um, but there's one I want to, oh, here, what religion are you? So I'm just going to read this little excerpt from my book. If people ask me if I am Hindu or Christian, etc., I simply say I am all and none. I am the truth, which is contained within all religions and yet which is not bound by any. I am the unbound truth, which rests, which all rests within. Drop the dogma of man and ego and you will find the pure truth of existence. All these I am and yet am not. For the dogma and outward appearances are all transients which come and go. And I am the constant source which cannot be contained or held by any church or doctrine or religion. I am the simplicity of reality, nature seen and spirit unseen, one beyond the forms, which contains all forms, yet which is separate and distinct within the self all reflection of this world comes from the supreme self alone. Go beyond the reflection to the formless self of knowledge. Bliss and conscious awareness of the ever pure spirit, the Holy Spirit of truth made manifest, manifesting I am the reality behind all of existence the ever pure, untainted spirit of truth. All is from this truth. You are this truth. Let go of the false notions of ego-centered personality and be the truth that you are. Okay, so that's the reading this morning about religious persuasions. Okay, no need to fight between the different religious persuasions. They all come from someone attempting to share that divine truth, and then it gets layered over with dogma because men are not understanding 
the whole of it. Therefore, they put conditions on it, conditionings, dogmas, uh, try to make it into a um, <clears throat> place of, uh, you know, do this, don't do that type of thing, rather than getting to the heart of what it is. And if, when we get to the heart of what it is, then you can celebrate. You can celebrate all these divine traditions rather than seeing that you need to fight amongst each other. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you've enjoyed this, give a thumbs up. Okay, and have a wonderful Sunday, everyone. Continue forward on your path. It's well worth it. And again, if you have something to share, don't be afraid to step out and share it. Okay, have a great day. See you online. Aho!